Good morning, church. It's so wonderful uh, to come together and worship the Lord in truth and spirit, especially to celebrate the fellowship with the Lord and fellowship with one another. Today I'm going to talk about the most common Christian teachings and the Bible portion which not only Christians, even non-Christians might have known by heart. Many of the non-Christians might have known it by heart. By heart. That is the B attitudes. You all know I uh, studied in Telugu medium and very recently I started learning and speaking in English. So first time when I just saw the word B attitudes, that was the time I was learning English through Bible. That was the beginning. That's the first English book I have ever read. And uh, I have no one around me to correct, so I used to read them beatitudes. What is this beatitudes? I could not understand. Because the word is so confusing. If you could read it as B attitudes, attitude spelling is A T T A T U D E S. One T is missing there. What is this? <laughs> Just if you read normally, it is beatitude. Then later somebody corrected me and helped me to uh, read it properly and said we have to read it as B attitudes though there is no attitude the word in them then later uh, recently when I, while I was studying about this word then I came to know this is not an English word actually it is from Latin uh, beatitudo is a Latin word that we have taken and we got our English word beatitudes so these are not beatitudes or <laughs> these are beatitudes which have come uh, from Latin. Uh, then I have a question posted in our church WhatsApp group. The question is very simple. If Roshan could, could put it on the screen. Um, what do you feel when you read or hear the beatitudes? What do you feel when you read or hear B attitudes? So please open our church group. You can find the link and you have uh, three options. You can, you can answer with the three words. You know, what you feel when you read or hear the B attitudes. You know, there are certain verses, the moment we read them, we feel comfort certain words when we read we get scared that that emotion I'm trying to uh, ask you know what do you feel the moment you read Beatitudes or hear somebody reading them please keep your answers coming I request all who have mobiles and part of the group, you can join, you can answer. And who are not part of church group, <coughs> you can open menti.com and enter the code double five two five six four seven three. You have a phone and you are not part of church WhatsApp group, you open menti.com and enter the code double five two five six four seven three and answer the question. What do you feel? when you read or hear the B attitudes. Okay. Okay, some said blessed, the moment you read we feel blessed. Good. Hopeful, great. Blessings, it's, a, it's God's character, wonderful. It's about kingdom of God, very nice because Jesus said he started speaking about the kingdom of God and started with these words. And it's a standard of life. Oh, that's great. And hopeful. You feel blessed. You feel sick, uh, scared. Oh, that's wonderful. Way of life. Way of living. Somebody needs, uh, that, that's pray or saying Namaste Babu Chordo. I don't know what is that. That's prayer, I believe. Uh, way of life, blessed. How to have lifestyle, okay? <coughs> so be the moment you see Beatitudes that remind you of Sermon on the Mount. So this is a cycle. Sermon on the Mount, Beatitude, Beatitude, Sermon on the Mount. Okay. Blessings with promise. Wonderful. Hard to practice. Blessings 
blessings till now eight people participated wonderful all your answers are really great and i guess almost um, you know you have preached the message i have prepared for today you know you have said already so what i'm going to do is i'll try to connect the words you have already uh, shared here i'm not going to share something uh, very new which uh, is not mentioned on the uh, screen these are the characteristics of an ideal disciple as you have mentioned here somebody said uh, where is this uh, god's character uh, standard of life comes under that way of life way of living these are the characteristics of uh, uh, ideal disciples but uh, as we are going to study these be attitudes we are not going to study the meaning of be attitudes because you might have heard hundreds of messages on uh, uh, the uh, on the meaning of be attitudes what these be attitudes mean okay blessed are the poor in spirit for this is the kingdom of heaven so i am not going to uh, give any exposition on each of these be attitudes but what i would like to do is i would like to take you along with me through the journey where we can understand the purpose of these be attitudes and we may be able to uh, understand the focus of these be attitudes that would be my goal so somebody read be attitudes like this blessed are the self made men for they have built their own kingdoms blessed are your social media posts because your life always look perfect in it blessed are the ruthless because they get what they want blessed are those who hunger for the newest iphone mine is not new iphone i am still using 13 okay blessed are those who hunger for the newest iphone for they will be the talk of the fr their friends blessed are the powerful for they shall receive respect blessed are the singles for they will have peace of mind oh sorry i read wrongly blessed are uh, <coughs> online dating app users for they will see a good time blessed are those who win at all means at any means for they will be called successful blessed are the celebrities for they shall love they shall uh, find love from everybody these are the beatitudes of the world do you agree with me yes the world says whoever have the best whoever can do do and achieve and gain the best are the blessed people and whoever receives anything in negative are not the blessed people and they are cursed but jesus he comes and he surprises throughout the humanity this is what people were be believing the moment you hear the word blessed people will get the people will feel in their mind you know a bank balance bmw car and a beautiful wife these are the things that come into their minds of course handsome husbands okay uh, so this is how they describe the blessedness but jesus comes and he surprises all of us as usual and he says uh, blessed are the poor in spirit nobody would like to consider but he says blessed are the poor in spirit for the kingdom of heaven is theirs blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled blessed are the merciful for they will show they will obtain mercy or they will show mercy blessed are the pure in heart for they will see god blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called sons of god blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for the kingdom of heaven is theirs these are entirely opposite to what the 
world speaks and these be attitudes of jesus the challenge the challenge our idols the challenge what we hope for the challenge our pleasures the uh, these be attitudes challenge our ambitions <coughs> and the challenge the false security in which we rest and the be attitudes of jesus are the reality of the nature of the kingdom of god as some of you have answered very well these be attitudes they explain about the characteristics of the kingdom of god and the teachings of jesus are entirely against the consumerist christianity and the be attitudes of jesus are the reality and the consumerist christianity what they teach are the parodies we know these days the health wealth prosperity what not what all we hear the description of blessedness unfortunately even in the church was completely aligning and going after the definition of blessedness in the world the be attitudes describe the expected character of disciples the be attitudes describe the character of god's kingdom as some of you have mentioned i said i am not preaching something new i am going to uh, preach what you have already answered i am going to connect your words be attitudes are the declaration of god's grace they are not the condition of salvation or road map to earn entry into god's kingdom the be attitudes what we are saying these are not the conditions to attain salvation so we are not talking about the way of salvation through be attitudes but the way of life that has been saved the be attitudes do describe about it so as we are going to study these be attitudes and learn, meditate on them you know you find in the bible be be attitudes are mentioned in two places once one you will find in matthew which we have read it is also mentioned in book of luke the luke version of beatitudes appears as if they were about social transformation blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom of heaven they shall be filled all social reforms those are spoken but in matthew it has more of discipleship related sense and nature for the beatitudes matthew is a sermon on the mount but luke version is sermon on the plains <coughs> you'll understand why am i saying this Uh, as we are moving forward in our sermon in matthew you will find jesus you can find it in the sermon on the mount and in the luke jesus comes down from the mountain and he will be speaking to the disciples and then he speaks about be attitudes which are having uh, social transformation uh, as the f- focus these two are in two different contexts matthew gives us eight of these be attitudes the first four are talking about the situation of the disciples poor meek you know persecuted these are talking about the situation of the disciples and the later four speak about the characteristics of the disciple and as i said in matthew the be attitudes are part of the sermon on the mount they start from uh, start these are the beginning of the sermon on the mount can you answer can you tell me or can you help me understand uh, can, what is another picture you can get the moment you think about sermon on the mount there is another great picture in the bible which is similar to the sermon on the mount do you know what is that there is another event in the bible which is very much similar in its action and in its nature the nature of the message somebody got answers i guess <laughs> huh feeding of 5000 good feeding of 5000 moses bringing down the 10 commandments moses was on the mountain and he was bringing the 10 commandments jesus was on the mountain and preaching 
this sermon. Let us see what are the connections we can find in these two uh, which helps us to understand the focus of this message. Beatitudes are, Beatitudes are given after Jesus returned from his wilderness experience for 40 days and 40 nights of fasting prayer or in other words we can say his personal interaction with God. And the Ten Commandments came after Moses climbed up to the mountain and he was in the presence of God 40 days and 40 nights and he was having intimate conversations with God. So Jesus was having conversation with God and he came and he gave Beatitudes. Moses, he had intimate communication with God and came and gave the Ten Commandments. The Beatitudes open the Sermon on the Mountain and the Ten Commandments open the long application of the law. The Beatitudes were spoken by the mouth of Jesus, mouth of God. And the Ten Commandments are given by the finger of God. Jesus, God in his, with his own finger, he has written and has given the Ten Commandments. The Beatitudes were recorded on human hearts, but the law and command, the Ten Commandments were recorded on the table of stone, tab so, tablets of stone. The B attitudes focus, uh, focus on internal attitudes, but the Ten Commandments focus on external actions. The B attitudes stress what to be, but the Ten Commandments warn of what not to be or what not to do. You take the Ten Commandments, all the Ten Commandments tell what not to do. You shall not have any other God. Okay, you shall not bow down, you shall not kill, you shall not murder, you shall not covet. So what not to do? <coughs> but one main common thing in these two is both are the discourses about the law. What Moses gave after coming down from Sinai mountain was the application of the law externally. What Jesus spoke, the first sermon Jesus spoke, after coming from wilderness was the attitude of the person who tries to keep the law. This has to be the attitude of the person who tries to keep the law. So both these discourses are about the law. Exodus is about expected acts under the law, but the Beatitudes are about the expected attitude <coughs> under the law again. Let me tell you this statement and to simplify. The Sermon on the Mount is an expression of the law only. The Sermon on the Mount is not a message of grace. The Sermon on the Mount is an explanation of the law in its depth. Uh, uh, if you have to pick up stones, <laughs> please hold them for a while, then we will be able to understand. Somebody said, Beatitudes are scary. I really would like to appreciate that person. My heart also resonates with that person. When I read Beatitudes, I also get scared. Because the characteristics of the Beatitudes are competitive in nature. The word, look at the word poor. Poor is, is a competitive term. Can you describe what poverty is? Can we describe? No, we cannot describe poverty unless we, we have uh, richness in front of, uh, in, unless we have richness. When we have two things, then only we can say this is poor and this is rich. The, the word poor is a comparative term. I'm, I'm a poor fellow. I'm truly telling I'm a poor fellow. If I have Ambani next to me, I'm definitely like a beggar kind of fellow. Okay, and there are so many people who are begging on the road in their comparison, I'm a rich fellow. Right? All of us. And the beggar, he must be richer to the person who was about to kill himself. <laughs> right? These words are comparative in nature, so we cannot describe this word. So, when we say blessed are the poor, my question is this. Am I poor? I cannot tell. Am I poor? What about meek? We talk. Can 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 we say anybody? Can I, any of us tell us tell here? I am a meek person. 
it is very difficult right if we say i am a meek person just imagine about mother teresa we are meek or she is meek are we proud people again it's comparative term it's so confusing i am i am whether i don't know whether i am a proud person or a humble person because these are comparative are we hungry we cannot say uh, you know we cannot even tell when we felt hungry right unless we missed uh, we went uh, we, we were driving and could not find a restaurant can we say we are hungry no all these are comparative in nature so we uh, when we to say poor it has to be extremely poor to say rich it has to be extremely rich otherwise there is no no one of us can use these words so my question is is there anyone who is poor in spirit in the church here i think about myself as i was preparing this am i poor in the spirit i don't know sometimes we may feel i am doing good works i am reading scripture i am going to church regularly i am giving my donation i am giving tithes i am helping people and you know what i am going and sweeping the church also i'm i'm a uh, you know i humbled myself can we say we are poor in the spirit the moment we list these things out we are becoming proud in the spirit hmm? the moment we list out about our spirituality we become proud some say i am obeying the god's commandment very well the other person is going and drinking and uh, taking drugs the moment we bring these two we are becoming proud the elder son and younger son story we all know the elder sons are uh, elder, younger sons are in the bars the elder sons they are in the church from the uh, uh, you know luke chapter 15 the parable of the lost father, lost son father of the lost sons both of them were lost equally lost so these words are so scary to me to say blessed are the poor in spirit my question always comes when can i be blessed can i ever ever be blessed according to this hmm? can any of us possess these qualities we cannot answer and reality i am telling you none of us can absolutely possess these qualities so if we cannot possess these qualities in its absolute sense can we be the blessed can we call these words are comforting me no these are the words of judgment to me these words scare me to death any spiritually poor we don't know any meek no persecuted we don't know we indians we see we are being persecuted here then what about people in uh, middle east if we don't possess any of these qualities how can these words of jesus comfort us these are not the words of comfort but these are the words of judgment be attitudes describe the attitude attitude of the person who wants to obey the law so this according to the law this should be our attitude this should be our attitude but who ever wants to obey the law would try to attain this attitude try to attain these qualities but the reality is they cannot none of us can but the good news is attaining these qualities is impossible that is the good news of the attitudes the good news of the attitudes is not blessed are those the good news of the attitudes is i cannot attain it i cannot reach we need to come to the foot of jesus to get get help by attaining we reach the wall of impossibility and we cannot climb but the moment we realize that we cannot attain these we need the help of jesus what happens is we become poor in the spirit we become humble 
when we come to the foot of Jesus Christ. So, the B attitudes are not the words of comfort, are not the words that, that challenges us or encourages us to attain these qualities. They tell us we cannot attain and they prove that we are utterly lost. And when we come to the foot of Jesus, that is where it starts. Uh, that is where we start attaining these qualities step by step. We'll start experiencing them step by step. And ultimately we can become the blessed. And when, we, when I read these words, blessed are the poor in spirit and all these beatitudes, one of the Psalms from the Bible that comes to my mind always, that is, in Psalm, that is Psalm 24, where it is written, Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? These are the questions the psalmist says. Just imagine you are there and you are answering. So I'm like a psalmist I'm reading. Okay. Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in, in, in his holy place? He who has clean hands and pure hearts. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol. Nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. I still remember there were days, I, in fact I preached in my young age uh, a message from this saying like who shall reach to the mountain of the Lord, those who never lifted their hands to the idols and uh, the good qualities we talk about and I, I challenged people, you know, let us try to attain these good qualities so that we can reach to the hill of the Lord. That is totally wrong. Here, Samis asks the question, but he doesn't answer immediately. He answers later. He says, uh, um, He who has clean hands and pure heart. Anybody have clean hands? If you may have clean hands, but definitely not pure heart. Our heart is totally deceitful, as Isaiah says. Okay. And he shall receive the blessing from the Lord, which is impossible. According to that, and righteousness from God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Look, can you see the transition taking place? The psalm is, he is not focusing on the people and he is taking the focus on somebody. And who is this somebody? The description is given from verse on verse, 7 on verse. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this person who can attain these qualities that is king of glory? Who is king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he, hosts, he is the King of glory. And here Psalmist take the attention to the people who shall climb to the mountain of the Lord. And he says, none of us can climb, only the King of glory can reach to the mountain. None of us. So the B attitudes are also spoken just like this psalm. Who shall attain this blessedness? The answer is none of us. Who can attain? Jesus alone. That is what blessed B attitudes are talking about. They talk about Jesus. Jesus is the only one who has all these qualities. Can we find any humble person more than Jesus? Better than Jesus? No one. His humility has been very greatly explained in Philippians chapter 2 and Bible challenges us to have the same mind in us. Being God, he humbled himself even, he, he, he gave himself into the hands of the wicked people and to be killed in their hands and to be buried. Who is the source of life was without life and being buried in the underground. Jesus alone holds these qualities. He is the humblest man. He is the meekest person. He is the poorest person. He emptied himself, the scripture says. He gave everything he has for us. As uh, Selena was leading the worship, she said, He gave everything to us, himself completely to us. And he became, what is something that we cannot give to others? Ourselves, right? And Jesus, he gave himself also to others. Okay, because he is being God, he is able to give himself to others. And he is the poorest person. And he alone up, who have all these qualities, he alone is the blessed person. So these beatitudes are not given to us to say that you are blessed. 
these are not given to say to be comforted i mean there can be messages and just uh, in this forward uh, perspective it is like that okay matthew chapter 5 verse 17 it uh, it says like you know by jesus telling that you cannot attain these things uh, so he is removing the law no, he is saying that, do not think that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy them, but to fulfill them. Can you understand the difference between the words obeying the law and fulfilling the law? Jesus doesn't say, I came to obey the law. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. Obeying the law means doing everything that it says. Fulfilling the law is understanding its purpose, understanding its goal, and reaching it that is fulfilling the law the purpose of this remote is to point if it pointed it fulfilled its purpose anything fulfilling the purpose is uh, sorry reaching the purpose is the fulfillment of it jesus came to reach the fulfillment sorry to accomplish the fulfillment of the law by dying on the cross he brought all of us into the kingdom of God. That is the purpose of the law. Purpose of the law is not that we have to obey and become righteous. The purpose of the law is to prove us that we cannot obey the law. We will utterly fail. We are com completely lost within ourselves. And we need Jesus so that we may come to the foot of Jesus. That's why Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, the law has been our tutor to bring us to the the faith in Jesus Christ. When we try to obey the law, we come to understand it is impossible. Somebody have to help. That is Jesus. <coughs> so, Jesus, by doing this, what is happening is we are joining Jesus as he fulfilled the law for us. When we put our faith in Jesus, we are also fulfilling the law. When we, we don't do that and we say, I'm going to obey it and do something that means we are not fulfilling the law. We are going to going on the path of impossibility. That's all. Jesus accomplished putting our faith in him. He is also fulfilling the law in our lives. And next part is this. Whoever therefore, this is very important. Okay. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments. This is in Matthew only he is saying. As I said, Sermon on the Mount is the description of the law. And Jesus says, whoever breaks one of these least, can you feel any of these things are least? Anything in the Sermon on the Mount, do they sound least and simple? Those are too hard. He said, you shall not look at a woman with the lustful eyes. If you have done, you have already committed adultery. Not even a thought. If you call somebody fool, you are on your way to hell. Is it least? Is it simple? No, and Jesus is saying, these are the least. <laughs> anyone, who, uh, anyone who breaks one of these least commandments and teach others to do. One is breaking. That itself is impossible. Following it is impossible. Second thing is teaching others to do are the least in the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus says. So, we are not called here to take the Sermon on the Mount and tell, tell people these are the ways God wants you to live. Where we ourselves are not able to live. Then let me tell you, Jesus says that we are the least people in the kingdom of God. And I would like to say, those who say uh, we ought to do it and they fail to do it and teach others, they become hypocrites because they themselves cannot Obey what they are teaching. So, Sermon on the Mount, Beatitudes are so hard, so scary. It is not just talking about the plan of salvation. People may say, oh, we put our faith in Jesus. Now it's okay. We already put our faith in Jesus. So, I am not saying you have to obey this in order to attain your salvation. But after you attain your salvation, you have to do this. Again, we are doing the same mistake. 
this b attitudes are not the pathway to attain salvation but these uh, these are not talking about plan of salvation but these are talking about the living as a law keeper again if you try to keep again any of these by yourself you are trying to become the trying to become the law keeper again okay. okay so these are not for that then people may say what shall i do after being saved you are saying you should not do the you, you don't need to do these or oh, the law is there this uh, sermon on the mount is there these are the keeping the law then what should i do the answer is very simple enjoy your salvation enjoy you are saying i try did my best to attain ice cream you got your ice cream then what to do that's what you are asking eat enjoy <laughs> And, but it is a tricky question people may say oh you pravin you are not understanding what i am saying but i can relate to what you are trying to say the answer is this unfortunately many could not perceive the salvation that is gifted to them we christians we believe in jesus we know in G believing jesus only we have salvation not in obeying the law we all know that we are not trying to obey the law we all believe in jesus but unfortunately many of us are not able to perceive or notice what we have received you know why we could not perceive and notice what we have received it is because we put our eyes again back on the law we put our eyes back on the law that is why we are not able to perceive the salvation we received we are not able to enjoy the salvation we received is because we are still our minds are still on ourselves again they are not on christ through jesus work we have a great relationship with god has been established my friends um, let me challenge you with this question can you feel your relationship with god it is a tangible reality if you don't feel your relationship with god there is no point in singing all those songs they won't make any sense the very purpose of salvation is relationship with the lord when we are not able to experience that relationship what is the point in claiming that i am saved the salvation is about relationship with the lord and let me tell you it is a tangible reality it is a tangible reality and it becomes a truthfully tangible reality when you put your uh, focus on jesus not on any other things not on the sermon on the mount not on the 10 commandments when you put your focus on jesus then you will be able to notice your salvation then you will be able to perceive your salvation then you will be able to experience your salvation our salvation is not just our commitment to accept the teachings of christianity unfortunately many christians many of us we got stuck there okay this is trinity this jesus came died and buried rose again from the dead i believe this okay i affirm you know i accept these teachings oh, i am saved no it is not salvation is not about just accepting the teachings of christianity it is about a personal tangible relationship with god in the spirit and if you are not able to experience it don't be you don't need to be disappointed you can just take a moment and pray to god god i really want to experience this salvation i want to experience relationship with you then truly i am telling you you will not be disappointed but one condition that is take your eyes off everything else or even yourself even the sermon on the mount even the law and put them on jesus then you will be able to experience it tangibly so <coughs> we cannot notice our salvation as long as we set our eyes on the law we can only perceive and notice uh, perceive and celebration our salvation when we fix our eyes on jesus that's why author of hebrew says in hebrew 12 to let us look unto jesus who is the author and perfecter of our faith so what is the purpose of these be attitudes now to take our attention to jesus first we cannot be saved it is impassable path impossible path to follow the law that is impossible wall so we need to put our faith in jesus so the law and sermon on the mount teaches us leads us to the foot of jesus that is one part now we are saved by grace through faith 
We are not saved by obedience of the law. And we all know that. And everybody believe that. And we are not going to live also by the law or by the Sermon on the Mount. That we need to realize. Not only being saved, we are not going to live by the law. So that is where these Beatitudes teach us to fix our eyes on Jesus. So Beatitude describes the qualities of the one who seeks to obey the law as I said. This is a good news because the Beatitudes are impossibly hard to fulfill. The purpose is to teach us that good news, uh, that it, uh, sorry, the purpose of it is to teach us uh, to come to Christ, to show us Christ and to guide us to Christ. That is the purpose of the Beatitudes. The Sermon on the Mount is the law and it's in its application. That is, it's not possible. That is the application. It is impossible to keep or obey the Sermon on the Mount. That's why Matthew 11, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are labor, sorry, come to me, all you who labor and have heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That is the fulfillment of the purpose of the Sermon on the Mount or the law. So in conclusion, what I would like to say is BA attitudes are blessings if we anticipate them in faith by God's grace. And their purpose is to bring us to the foot of Jesus. They become curse. If we try to use them to attain salvation or if we try to use them to continue your Christian walk, they become curse in our lives. If we try to attain it by our own virtue, they are impossible. Jesus is the only blessed one who possesses all these great qualities in these eight? Blessed are those in Beatitudes. They are talking about Jesus. And when we put our faith in Him and join Him, completely look unto Him, we start partaking in those blessedness. And only by acknowledging our inability and coming to the foot of Jesus, then only we can experience the blessedness. May God bless you.